looks beautiful. In this episode, we make our way north up Cape York. After leaving Port Douglas, we have stops at Fairfield Station, a river in Cohen, and then Morton Telegraph Station. We then take a detour off to the coast to see Captain Billy landing to the east, and then come along and get a free camp not far from Elliot and Fruitbat Falls. We then have a night out at the Elliot Falls campsite with our tents, head back to that free camp before making our way over the Jardine and up to Punson Bay, and then hitting the tip of Australia at Pajinka. Lakeland, which is the gateway to Cape York. So we're really excited to be here. Bit windy, but really nice park here. And we'll have a look around at the information signs and head up to Cape York. Fingers crossed. Simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in Lakeland and we're going to go from, uh, from Lakeland to Laura, from Laura to Musgrave, to Musgrave to Cohen, and then that's it. Probably one of the most informative and interesting visitor information stops I've ever been to. I agree, there's so much here to take on. It's incredible. And it's so beautifully laid out, isn't it? Yeah, so it's sort of done in the map of the Cape York, going up the spine and sort of heading up to the east and the west. It has the um, indigenous names of each animal. So the dingo is Okola. We're a bit slow, aren't we? Yeah. So it turns out we're having a few dramas before we've even started onto the um, unmade road up yeah, here. Yeah, we just saw the corrugations are dirt ahead, so we're just deflated. And um, this rear left tyre, which is different from the one we had issues with previously, it's got a huge crack running around here, running up to there. So that's almost like two thirds of the tyre. It has a big crack in it, so. I suspect that's a lucky thing for us that we found it in time. Could have been a massive blowout otherwise. Yeah. Um, geez, I'm not sure if they sell tyres north of here or not, so we'll pop into Hard River Roadhouse and see what they say. Get ourselves a spare tire in Cohen. Yeah, the Cohen mechanic has sorted us out. We did a ring around to a few of the roadhouses and things in the area. I think a few people come through and sort of get rid of tires that have still got a bit of tread on them. So they sort of put on a second hand tire for us. It's a road tire rather than a four wheel drive and it's not quite the right size, but yeah, it's, it's the best quite, we can do. It's not as wide as we like, the diamond is fine. So we've put up to what we think is probably the Cohen River, just outside of Cohen. And um, geez, yeah. one of the campsites was super choppers. So we came in a bit further up the road, a bit closer to Cohen, where there's a couple of brave people that made it down to the river. It's a bit wild to get down there. Yeah. But beautiful once you are down here. We've just camped a bit closer to the road and just came down for a little swim. Yeah, awesome nice. place. Making our way north again. We left Cowan last night and heading up towards Morton Telegraph Station is the rough plan for today. 
plodding along on the dirt track while hoons come by, fly <laughs> past us. Yep, what did you call yourself, Grandpa Stacy? Yeah, Grandpa Stacy, just plodding along. There's a few, it's, it's still intermittent sealed and dirt, and the dirt really hasn't been too bad. There's a couple of little tiny um, creek crossings, but yeah. Yeah, so far if you follow the beware rough surface signs, it's been great. Yep, and they seem to have a few graders out working on the roads, so fingers crossed it stays like that. We'll wait and see. Maybe not after we get the turn off to Weeper. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Anything to add, kids? Well, we are in bitumen at the moment, which is why we're doing the recording now. Yeah. It's not normally like this. So we've arrived at Morton Telegraph Station pretty early in the day, had lunch here, set up camp. It's a really nice spot under the trees, lots of shade, a few scrub turkeys wandering around. There's a little bush walk we can do this afternoon. Kids have already found that they sell ice creams here. This should be a nice spot to be for the afternoon and tonight. So we're going to go down for a swim, you reckon? Uh, probably not swimming, but you can um, still walk by the river, just not too close. So we're at an iconic spot here, this is the Bramwell Roadhouse, which is the start of the old telegraph track. So there's a whole bunch of excited people who are pretty keen to hit that hardcore four-wheel driving. For our part, we're going to go to Captain Billy Landing out on the coast. The wind's already picking up now, as you can hear, so it could be a bit brutal out there. We'll see how we go. the wind we knew there'd be some of that but we're at Captain Billy Landing which is quite an idyllic spot only about a couple hundred K south of the tip what do you recommend to drive in? Fine a few little hairy bits the scariest part is oncoming traffic when you're towing a van yeah so far we're the only ones to have towed in today yeah what a spot this is beautiful here it is it's gorgeous quite a few locals down for a Sunday afternoon fishing they're actually catching stuff. Yeah, only with the handrail too. It's pretty impressive. Okay. So I've just finished coming out of Captain Billy Landing, 30 kilometers down that away. And we could actually head north, continuing up there for about 45k making our way towards Elliot and Twin Falls and Fruitbat Falls. We're gonna set up camp there, drop the caravan, and then jump into a bit of the old telegraph track and see some people do some crazy stuff. That's the plan anyway. Just gonna find that space for the corrugations where it's a gentle massage, rather than it feels like it's ripping everything apart in the car and the van. <laughs> I think I'm there. Extreme knitting, it's very hard when it's bumping up and down to poke your um, needle through the stitch. Uh oh. That's our tire monitoring system. Yeah, one of them just gets a bit upset. That's right. It feels the pressure more than the other one does. Oh. Can you hear that? As much as we feel it.
Now that's what you call a washout. So we're at Cockatoo Creek and we don't really know which way to go. We've got two options and both of them are really extreme. So one of them is to come across this bridge here, which basically has lost half of it. Half the top of the wood has come off and you'd have to balance your tires very, very well and you probably wouldn't make it. <laughs> Doesn't sound great. Yeah. yeah. Ellie, what you got for us? Um, our second option would be over here with a steep and um, tilting decline into uh, the stream, followed by well, mud. Well, this part looks fine. What's wrong with this? Yeah, followed by mud, and on the other side, may I just show you? All right. So so far that looks fine to me, El. I think yeah, we should we just do, do that. that. That's fine. No, 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 no. Trust me. When you um, once you've crossed this, um, once you've got to the other side, you'll be wanting to cross this bridge because um. When you get out of that mud, this is how you do it. Oh. Yeah. It's like almost vertical. Well, yeah. And it's all slippery. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Looks so fine up there. Some muggy mud. Looks pretty tough in there. So probably best way to go across the bridge. I just found it really amazing. Beautiful. Dream towards Elliot and Twin Pools. at 
Elliot Falls Campground. Very nice little spot. It's pretty quiet here. Not many around. I think there's about 30 campsites available. Not many taken. Yeah, we're going back to basics. Got a couple of tents, got the car, Trangia stove for tonight's dinner. Had a great day, haven't we, guys? Yeah, yeah. it's been super fun swimming in all the water holes. I'd say saucepan was probably my favourite to swim in. Same. Yeah. So we went to three different water holes the Twins, the Saucepan, and Elliot Falls. Um, they were all quite different in their own ways. My favourite was probably the Saucepan. Yeah. Um, Elliot Falls we didn't really go in because it was so deep and the falls was, the waterfall was like really big. Like yeah, it, it went into a yeah. canyon, so it looked like it was a bit of a hard to get out once you're in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, the saucepan. It doesn't seem, a lot of people seem to not even know it's here. It's Underrated. A, yeah, it's a cracking it's spot, good. so if you come out here, definitely go upstream, check out the saucepan. Like all of our four-wheel driving expeditions, we've got a couple hundred metres down the old telegraph track from Elliot Falls Turnoff, and we're just at the um, Canal Creek here. Validates the decision, doesn't it? Sometimes, there's what's amazing is people try this stuff. Like, <laughs> beds, a bit of not, not bad for scale. You see, it's a bit closer, but it's just ridiculous. Yeah, that's how he says a monster truck. This is what they call the chicken track. This one. We are heading out of the Elliot Falls campsite where there's Elliot Twin Falls and also the saucepan. And we forgot to say that last night there was a bit of adventure at the camp. Jane and Ellie went off to get some water. What happened? Well, Ellie was walking a little ahead of me and I had the torch and then I noticed, I went, I yelled out, oh, snake. And then Ellie said, where? And she stopped and she was in a snake entanglement with a snake, not probably about half a metre long, maybe a bit 60 centimetres maybe. Dark in colour, no idea what sort of species. Around her feet she was kind of standing right on it, which made me scream and tell her to run forward, which she did and the snake got away and we all seemed to survive, but it was a bit scary wasn't it Ellie? Yeah. <laughs> it was scary, we had to do some puncture wound tests. Ellie was pretty certain she didn't feel anything, but we're a long way from medic any medic medical help at the moment, yeah. um, so we looked around extensively. She was wearing pants, fortunately, and shoes. It would have yeah. been really bad if I did get bitten. It really would have been yeah. a hard spot to do a medical evacuation from um, mm. up in the dark. So we're about to um, go on the Jardine River uh, ferry kind of thing so we're gonna put our vehicle on and then we're gonna go across the river so we can get to the other side of the Kenyol. Awesome. How much did it cost cost for the ferry? 205 bucks. 
And is that the return or just one way? I presume it's ret return. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they've given us a sticker, cost a fair bit. Cost 25 bucks, yeah. But it's the only way. We don't want to swim. <laughs> Definitely don't want to swim. Oh, we're going across, guys. To an absolutely spectacular beachfront campsite at Fun Sand Bay. It's pretty good, isn't it? It's a ripper. I love it. Mm. We're gonna have a good time there, I'm sure. Okay. Um, where are we off to now, guys? So we're about to head up to the most northernest um, point of mainland Australia and Woo! dive tip. Yay! Finally, hey? Yeah. yeah, it's really, it's gonna be really exciting. At the beach, there's a big crocodile, crocodile called Gary. We're not, so mm. we're not allowed to swim there. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? But there's an upside. What is it, the caravan park at Punsan Bay? A pool! It looks yep. magnificent. Yep. And we're also about to go to the crop tent, which is a souvenir shop. Yeah! Yep. Stop at the crop tent on the way to the tip. Hold on to your hats, folks. Don't want to get stuck here with the crocodiles. All right, well, we are at the car park to head to the tip and got a bit lucky here in that we've got a low tide. So apparently you can walk along the beach to get there. So we thought we'd give that a whirl and then do the classical walk over the rocks to come back.